Hello, everyone. This is uh, Shadi Reis from uh, CVI 2023 in Austin. I'm really privileged to be with Dr. Srinivas uh, Iyengar, who uh, has been uh, a phenomenal structural interventionist, and we always have him on the show with something new and innovative. Srinivas, always nice to be Chad, with you. Chad, great to be here. Yeah. So uh, today, I think we should discuss a little bit about TAVR durability. Absolutely. Because, you know, what we're <clears throat> seeing, you know, nationally, if not internationally, younger patients are requesting getting TAVR rather than open AVRs or SAVR. Absolutely. And the rationale is built a lot on data. We're seeing durability data actually looking quite good for certain forms of TAVR. Yeah. Yes, specifically, the super annular platforms like the Evolute platform from Medtronic has excellent long-term, almost 10-year data yeah. stating that these valves are lasting longer than surgically placed valves. So 10 years now you have Almost up to 10 Almost up to 10 years, yeah. absolutely. But this is the caveat that I would also say though, you know, we should really take into account our surgeons, our colleagues that perform the surgical valves because younger patients that are getting TAVR will probably need, most likely, another procedure. Yeah. So there's issues that come up wrong. We need to think about coronary access. Yes. We do need to think of eventual Valve, valve and valve, valve taver. Yeah. So not just valve valve surgical, you know, putting as a taver in a surgical valve, but rather a taver in a taver. Right. These are issues that are going to be real. So I think the industry overall is looking at that problem realistically and saying, well, what do we do now that younger patients are getting taver? We have to think about the next taver valve that gets placed. Before you implant the first one. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So we have to be thinking of that logically. I think the discussion with, with the patient, patient is more important. But the team, the heart team model that Taver was built around is still critical, even more now than it was 15 years ago. Yes. Because back then it was inoperable patients. Yeah, it's easy. Today, you know exactly. we're dealing with patients maybe in their 60s who want Taver. And mm -hmm. I think the surgeon, the cardiologist, and the patient should have that discussion about, well, guess what? If you get this Taver, What's the next step? What are we going to think about? And we can't just guess. We have to really have an educated mindset about this. Yeah. So the good news, though, is thankfully the data for TAVR, at least the super annular platform with the largest valve, you know, when you put a large valve in a patient, and the surgeons will tell you this, and they've told me this, and they've taught me a lot, the larger the valve, the longer it usually lasts. Absolutely. So that's what we tell patients to this day. We try to put the largest valve, whatever platform it is, in that person. The best data, however, we see now, again, the super annular platforms are yeah. really giving us that positive data. So we have a lot, of, a lot of wind in our sail pushing us forward in this direction. What we do need to anticipate, though, there should be some choppy waters coming up here. You know, there could be a storm coming. We have to be careful about this. So that's why when it comes to patient care, the heart team model is still very critical in dealing with this. The second thing is, thankfully, we have some really good data about TAVR durability. So a question about the surgeon's um, understanding. I think we have a lot of different generation of surgeons, people who still believe in SAVR and others who are kind of more kind of recently trained who are enduring the TAVR era. Right. So, um, but sometimes you have a um, discussion with the patient and uh, the surgeon argument that they are taking the whole valve out and putting a new valve in, so they are expanding. That's why they tell us, right. expanding the analyst and putting a new valve in. Is with the new generation of valves and with the new anatomy and the new implantation and stuff, is this uh, issue can be overcome with the TAVR? Well, I think that talking to surgeons, and again, being a cardiologist, as we both are, yeah. I oftentimes find it interesting that we say, why can't you just make the root? bigger. And a lot of surgeons will look at you and say, well, that's not what we do. Or I can take a 19 and make it a 20. In the sense that root enlargement is not as common as we all thought. Correct. You know, as cardiologists, we just assumed, you, can't you just make it bigger? And most surgeons will tell you, no, it's not that easy. Yeah. And depends the truth the is, it depends on the patient and the surgeon, how they were trained. So the root enlargement procedure is not as common as we all assume it should be. Right. And the fact of the matter is, when you put in a TAVR valve, I have spoken to surgeons who are very trained, very well trained, who will say, I could take a root and make it slightly bigger from a 19 to 21, but if I put in an Evolute, I can put a 26 in. You know, I can put much larger valve. So hemodynamics of the valve Exactly, are much better because yeah. it's super annular. Yeah. So when you start talking about physiology and you know, patient prosthesis mismatch issues and these types of uh, scenarios, 
it's incredibly right. important to not just assume a surgeon can open the chest and all of a sudden miraculously take a, a old frail or frail 85 year old woman and take her 19 annuals make it a 26. It's, not it's very very difficult okay. so I think there is some type of uh, assumption on our end that a TAVR has taught us to respect what the surgeons can and cannot do Absolutely. and take their opinion on that. The second point you mentioned is reaccess. So uh, which one is, uh, from your experience and the research as well, is re easy to access the coronary once you have a tavern? Well, there's no doubt. If you have nothing crossing the coronaries, it's going to be easier just intuitively because there's nothing there. Mm -hmm. I will say using both platforms or using uh, basically both Edwards and Evolute over my, throughout my career that there's been no issues on my end to say I can't get into the coronaries. I can always get into a STEMI through an Evolute. However, I do understand my colleagues who may say seeing that little, that, that, uh, that, uh, that trust arm sitting in the exactly the right there it's a mental issue too you know it could be like how do i get through this i will say that eventually will things change in this platform will they come up the larger cells that would only be the next step you know logically you would think that that will be down the road hopefully to see that change because that will then make it easier for all of us to say well if i put that valve in and i put another one in 10 years it will be Am I overlapping exactly. these? Exactly. We're there. not going to overlap the coronaries. So I do think coronary access is definitely going to be a big part in how we cho choose valves for younger patients going forward. But I also think if you put in a valve because of coronary access now that doesn't last, well, then I'm not sure we're doing any service for the patient either. I think you have to have the best valve in first. And then obviously as technology evolves, we will then hopefully have a solution for it in the next decade or yeah. so. One of the new topics now is TAVR and AI. Is there any new data about this topic? So there is data, but I'm not sure how great it is for us to utilize it. I mean, it's just like saying, well, we can try it and hope for the best for inoperable or palliative care patients. However, I, or compassionate use patients at that matter. But I would say the valves are specifically being generated for AI are generated for AI. They're not the current TAVR models mm -hmm. that are being used successfully. What we need to understand is that the AI is a different pathology. It is not AS. And for us to look at it, and I just, when I explain AS to patients, and I explain to a number of them, they say, well, why do you not take the old valve out when you put the tavern in? I said, when you're laying your house, when you're building a house, you need concrete to foundation to build a house on. That's your valve. Your native valve is the concrete. The, the calcium keeps the aortic valve in place, the tavern in place. With AI, you're building a house on quicksand you have a very movable ground, and that's what AI is, right? It's a floppy, movable area. That's why TAVR doesn't fit in people with AI. And again, that analogy makes sense to patients because they always wonder, why doesn't the valve sit in both conditions? They're completely different pathologies. So I do believe that eventually we will have an AI percutaneous valve. However, but within the current current form, I don't see it right now. Okay, last topic, bicuspid. So bicuspids are inherent to our initial conversation, how we started this, younger patients. Mm -hmm. What do we see AS patients in that are younger? Bicuspids. We are seeing much better data now than we were earlier in the trials. Remember, the earlier TAVR trials excluded a number of these patients. Now we are inclu inco you know, basically incorporating them, including them. What we're noticing though is with bicuspids, they're not all the same. They all have different types of bicuspids. They're all different types of uh, formulations of how the valve actually looks, where it depends on your receiver's classification. Mm -hmm. What we're learning is the bigger the valve, usually the better, you know? So that's another reason why I always push for the biggest valve in these patients, especially the bicuspid younger patients, because number one, they're young, and number two, bicuspids act differently than traditional senile calcific aortic stenosis. Sri, so thank you so much for your time. Really, that was a kind of a, a year in review for aortic valve <laughs> transcatheter therapies. I appreciate your time always. Thank you for watching uh, us. This is CVI 2023 from Austin. This is Shadi Reyes. Sri, thanks so much again. You got it, my friend. Thank you. Thank you.